The Jim Mora era at UCLA has firmly taken hold, but there are still some very capable uh, leftover talent from the Rick Neuheisel regime, and we saw that at the NFL draft. We bring in Mike W.R. to size up some of the big losses for the Bruins coming into 2015, and who are those guys that need to step in for these impact players? So, Mike, of course, we appreciate the time. Let's start with Eric Hendricks, who became one of the best linebackers, if not the best linebacker in college football. 150 total tackles last year, 11-plus tackles for loss. So if you can kind of address the void there that he leaves and, and who we can expect to, to take the reins. Well, thank you for having me on once again. Um, when it comes to Kendricks, that's almost an irreplaceable player. Uh, you, you, you listed a lot of his stats. Um, one that he achieved last year in his senior season, excuse me, <clears throat> was uh, all-time UCLA's all-time leading tackler, so definitely going to miss that. Uh, he's not a guy that, that comes off the line, not a pass rusher, but he's perfect uh, right right in the middle, handling uh, middle linebacking duties, and he got drafted to uh, Minnesota Vikings, where he will be uh, meeting up with former UCLA uh, uh, teammate Anthony Barr, so right there, I'm, I'm excited for, for, for Minnesota to see how that uh, defense is, is, is going to hold up, but... With Kendrick's gone, that leaves a huge hole in, in UCLA's defense. Um, they have the you know, he was basically the defensive leader, you know. And how how do you replace the all-time leading tackle? Well, you, you don't. <laughs> you try to. Honest opinion is that you don't. Um, very athletic, very fast. Uh, he, can, he can cover the middle of the field, but uh, like I said, irreplaceable. You have Miles Jack, who's going to do a a fantastic job already. He's you know he's going to be the guy on defense. He's going to take over uh, on the defensive side as the, as the defensive leader. Um, you also have some young guys, uh, Kenny Young, who's who's probably going to be a little bit more of a pass rusher, but uh, he's going to help out um, uh, in the linebacking core. And one of the good, one of the great things about UCLA's recruiting is that they have just recruited some really good guys, really solid guys, guys that with a little bit of development, are going to do great things. Um, I mentioned Young. There's also a couple other guys, Aaron Wallace, who has a chance to come in and, and do some damage. Um, so, uh, so many young guys. I mean, they, they even recruited uh, uh, two guys that are coming in. And Actually, sorry. They recruited two guys this past National Signing Day, one of them that, who, who's already enrolled, Josh Woods, and another one, uh, Keyshawn Lewis yourself, who will be more of a pass rusher, outside linebacker, but still... It's 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 really good to see that UCLA is just reloading with with all of these recruits, and you know the, uh, a lot of them are going to get developed over time. They're going to do uh, real well, but honestly, there's no one that can replace Eric Kendricks. So <laughs> it's going to be a challenge to see who can do that, and it's going to be interesting to see if maybe Miles Jack can do that because he's going to be uh, he he's uh, apparently for the coaches he's going to be moved to inside linebacker, so he's going to be covering you know all of that. He's Miles Jack, you've seen this guy. He, you know, last year we saw he improved his coverage. Uh, we knew he can run uh, uh, sideline to sideline. So him just commanding the middle, uh, that's going to be the closest we we have uh, to Kendricks being replaced. But it's going to be hard because you know the, the there was that tandem of Kendricks and Jack. Right now it's just Jack. But as I said, we have a lot of young guys coming in. So now with Kendricks and Anthony Barr both in Minnesota, and with no NFL team in Los Angeles, maybe some Bruins fans actually start rooting for the Vikings. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but uh, Ken Kendrick's the big loss, of course, in terms of just sheer production and talent. But two losses along the defensive line. Uh, Ogie's. Uh... Omabe <laughs> Odigizua. Thank you. Man, I used to have that, that name down and it completely eluded me, even though you prepped me before we came on. 11 and a half tackles for loss, uh, six sacks. And Ellis McCarthy, easier name to pronounce, he goes to the Dolphins as a. Uh, undrafted free agent, and he was a main contributor as well. So defensive line loses two key components, uh, if you can address the uh, the front. Definitely, uh, and it's even more of, 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 of an issue because of how uh, Jim Mora likes to uh, – he, he's utilized the 3-4 defense. So um, it would probably be a little bit uh, harsher – uh, in terms of uh, using a 4-3, but uh, a 3-4 right now, I think UCLA can handle that, but uh, they still lose two guys who have a lot of experience. Uh, 
Ellis McCarthy who had said that maybe he should stay for his senior year. Uh, he wanted to test the waters. Didn't go undrafted, but he did get signed. So you know, good for him. You know, proud for every uh, proud of every Bruin that's that uh, gets picked up. But uh, it would have really helped UCLA uh, UCLA's defensive line next year if McCarthy stayed. And then having uh, well, and that was a thing too. Uh, McCarthy was a backup to Kenny Clark, who Kenny Clark is going to be. You got to look for that guy next year. He's just going to be phenomenal as at nose tackle. But losing Odigizua is that guy's just a beast. Uh, big guy, ferocious. Uh, he can get after the ball. Uh, not 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 an not an essential pass rusher in you know in you know pure definition. But if if he had an open lane to the ball, quarterback, you know he would get after it. But uh, you know he can he can plug holes. So he's he's a guy that we're going to miss a lot. But one good thing is that. Uh, because of the Anthony Barr phenomena, UCLA has been looking for that pass rusher. Last year they did, and I think it was three games in, two or three games in, uh, they got a uh, commitment from Tackers McKinley, who was a, uh, tran a junior college transfer, and he was able to uh, participate right away. And he showed early a lot of what he can do, and he has pass rushing abilities, he's very fast off the line, and he's gonna, he really helped out uh, the defensive line last year. Uh, as I said before, uh, Kenny Clark, the nose tackle, he's he's a guy that's going to run over people. He's been doing that. He does that in practice. He he's showed that he's just a force to be reckoned with uh, uh, in the middle of that defensive line. And then on the other side, you have Eddie Vanderdos, who just another beast. You know, you see, you, since Jim Mora has gotten to Westwood, he's just recruited guys that fit their positions, and they're doing exactly what they needed. Vanderdose is going to be entering his junior season. He's played, you know, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't think he started every single game as a freshman, but he played every single game as a freshman. I'm pretty sure. But either way, the fact that he's been such a force for the defensive line, uh, it's it's been incredible. So, the defensive line ha is is solid right now, but it's a little shaky when you get to the backups. And we have some really good guys: uh, Jacob Tuio de Mariner, uh, and Yua Teui, uh, who who are they're going to do well with some development. At, but this year, they're going to be expected to speed up that process just a little bit because of of the loss. And uh, side note. UCLA only got one defensive lineman this past National Signing Day. So next year, they have to do some work. So that, that's what's going on with the defensive line. Odigizua, I got that uh, phonetically spilled out. <laughs> and since he's a third rounder to the Giants, he could stick out, uh, uh, you know, be a player that uh, stands out in the NFL for quite some time. So I, I got to get that name down. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the defensive backfield. Anthony Jefferson really supported the run well. Uh, from the defensive backfield, third on the team with 72 tackles, nine passes yeah. defensed. So um, how do we stand in the secondary? I know that's been a very strong point of Jim Moore's recruiting in the last few years, yeah. some outstanding talent uh, in the secondary. So how do we stand without Jefferson? Oh, they have talent. They have depth. They have, uh, you know, they use guys in different, in hybrid spots. You know, last year they used the nickelback formation a lot, giving that fourth uh, uh uh, giving a fifth position to the defense back. Sorry, not fourth, but fifth. And uh, but, but but Jefferson was uh, a safety, and he was a very good safety. He, you know, it didn't seem a lot got by him uh, last year. He was a he was a big hitter, quick, very intelligent, great with uh, catching routes um, uh, or identifying routes, uh, catching um, catching uh, the opponent's uh, game plan. I mean, he 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 just did it all. He's going to be uh, definitely missed. Um, but as, as we said, Jim Mora has just stocked up. The, the secondary is just full of guys that, that are talented uh, and, and are just waiting for their turn. Um, they're going to be uh, set with uh, Randall Goforth, who was injured most of, of last season. And, you know, if, if Goforth and Jefferson were in the backfield together uh, late in the season, you, the defense would have done some spectacular things. Unfortunately, Goforth went down early in the season, but we get him this year. So that's a plus. That's something, you know, Bruin fans are excited about. At the other safety spot is uh, sophomore Jaleel uh, Wadud, who, you know, last year as a true freshman just blew people's minds. He, 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 Took over that safety spotlight like he like he was a veteran, you know. Didn't didn't skip a beat. L little hiccups here and there early, but nothing noticeable. Nothing that slipped by or caused you know uh, lapses in the defense. Um, that's just one thing with this uh, with the the Jim Moore led teams is that they 
they're, they're ready. They're, they're, they're uh, ready on game day. They're ready in practice. They know exactly what to do. So Wadud coming in as a true freshman and handling that spot like a champ is perfect. It worked out, you know, fantastic. So um, Goforth is going to be missed, but uh, UCLA has a lot of guys to replace him. And then, you know, this, this past signing day, they got six guys for the defensive backs. That was that was the most players UCLA got in any position group uh, for National Signing Day. So they're they're going to be fine in the secondary. <laughs> Paul Perkins, I believe, led the Pac-12 in rushing, heading out mm-hmm. in the offensive line. Key in that, Malcolm Bunch gets picked up by the Philadelphia Eagles. Assess the offensive line coming into this fall. Good for UCLA because it's going to be the deepest, most experienced, and talented offensive line in years, well over a decade. So, you know, they're going to have Jake Randall in the center. He's going to be a senior. They have juniors, um, I'm trying to remember, Alex Redman, Scott Quesenberry, uh, and Caleb Beninock. That guy's a beast. And um, the tackles are going to be sorted out. So we'll, we're going to see how that is closer to... Uh, the first game of the season on September 5th against Virginia. But uh, in regards to Bunch, you know, he there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of talk about him transferring from Miami uh, before last season, and he was going to help out uh, the, the offensive line, which didn't have that much experience. Unfortunately, halfway through the season, things weren't working well with um, – with Bunch on the offensive line. Uh, he, he was at the tackle position, got replaced by a guy um, – I think it was a sophomore last year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a sophomore. Connor McDermott, who not a lot of uh, Bruin fans expected a lot from him, but when he came in and replaced Bunch halfway through the season, it it turned you know turned the lights on for the UCLA offensive line. It was that Utah game where they had ten sacks, which was like, okay, what's going on with the offensive line? And then just the problems with um, um, penalties, you know, offsides. Things seem to settle down and solidify when McDermott got on the line. So, you know, it's unfortunate for Bunch that he didn't, uh, he wasn't part of that system, but he did do some, you know, really good things and had, you know, got some really good experience in in Jim Moore's offense. Uh, Didn't get drafted, uh, most likely because of that, but he did get picked up. So it's good to see, you know, a guy that, you know, he, you know, sweated, you know, Went 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 through the motions with UCLA and 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 participated in their offensive line, trying to get them to, you know, you know another ten win season. Unfortunately, like I said, it didn't work out for him. But it's good to see that he's going to the NFL. So, well, this as for the offensive awesome. line, uh, Mike, like you say, two of the more recognizable uh, players in recent UCLA history, and Eric Hendricks and Brett Hundley, and some other key parts to some successful teams. It, it, it looks like you're you're pretty comfortable with what's coming back next year. Definitely. They're, I, I forget the number because you, you have so many guys that can uh, be plugged into to certain spots, but I think it's something like 20, 21 guys, or 19 or 20 returning starters for UCLA. And a lot of these preseason polls... You know they they they're looking past UCLA simply because they don't have a set quarterback. But we had talked about it before. UCLA will be fine on the quarterback position, whether it's Neuheisel or Woolard or most likely Josh Rosen, who people are just going to be stunned when they see this kid. I saw him during spring practice, and my jaw just dropped. I was like, "How is this kid a freshman? How is he this good as a freshman?" Not only that, he's taking like some. Uh, I think he's taking like pre-med courses or something. So not only is is he intelligent, he has good looks, but he's a fantastic quarterback. And I was like, come on, you gotta hate a guy like that. But <laughs> guy has it all. But at the same time, I I think UCLA's uh, entire offense, what whoever whatever quarterback they have, will be fine. But noted here, I think it's gonna be uh, Rosen. Yeah, it's almost not fair. Spread the wealth, you know. Yeah, spread the looks, <laughs> the talent, the smarts. It, it's gotta go around. To a certain yeah, totally. All right, Mike W.R. from Gojo Bruin, definitely our connection for UCLA football. Mike, we appreciate the time and the personal breakdown always, but today I also appreciate you showing to be a true professional, uh, going right through the phone call that I received and then also going through me botching the name of Odizuwa. Odizuwa. Odi Zuwa. Right. Odi <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think the first name is a little bit tough for Oamangbe. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Oamangbe. Wow. Yeah, but after after a while, you know, you just it naturally rolls off the tongue. Odigizua. So <laughs> yeah, and you get some other ones that you rolled off the tongue uh, in assessing the offensive and defensive line. So we'll we'll uh, 
will marvel at uh, your your enunciation and pronunciation as well. So Thank you. good stuff, Mike. Always appreciate the time. You take care, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mark. You too. Take care.